This tool here is Windows Admin Center. Windows Admin Center is free from Microsoft, and it's a tool that allows you to manage a whole host of things within a Microsoft infrastructure, not just Azure Stack HCI. However, when you manage an Azure Stack HCI cluster, you get a lot of context or contextual control and capability related to that cluster. So what I'm in here is I'm essentially in the management view of a particular cluster. Off the bat, we have the dashboard. The dashboard view is our kind of central landing page for Azure Stack HCI management. In this case, it's a two node cluster. Uh, I'll show you servers in a minute, a two node AX uh, node cluster running uh, Azure Stack HCI, the OS, with a total of 30 VMs running on there, a couple of storage volumes, and we're pretty highly utilized at this point. Yaramir has been running some um, performance testing, benchmarking and, and such, so it's keeping things busy there. So we get this high level view of what's going on on the system. Obviously, we can bubble this information up to a more centralized monitoring solution, either local or based in the cloud if we prefer. But for now, this is where we're um, this is where we're at. We also see up front this information about the Azure Stack HCI registration and Azure integration status. So in this case, Azure Stack HCI is successfully registered. If it was not registered, we wouldn't have the full functionality. If it was registered more than 30 days ago and hadn't been uh, and had been disconnected since then, it would show us out of compliance or out of policy. So that's an important point. So with Azure Stack HCI, you deploy, you register to Azure, and then ideally it stays connected to Azure. And every day, every couple of hours, it just phones home and says, yeah, this is the usage so far, number of cores, amount of time, thanks. However, if there's transient connectivity, if you intentionally go offline for a couple of weeks and the, the system isn't going to fall over, it's not going to stop working. What's going to happen is eventually after 30 days, the system will say, you're out of compliance. You need to connect to Azure to phone home and say you're still OK and here's the usage so that we Microsoft can send you a bill. But at that time, your workload will still continue to run. As soon as you go into an out of compliance mode, after that 30 days, certain functionality will be disabled. I couldn't create new VMs, for example. So it does become a little bit um, uh, reduced functionality mode, if you will. But that's why it's a connected solution today and you need to do that phone home. Now, in my virtual machine view, I'm sure Yaramir has uh, been busy here. So there's plenty of virtual machines uh, that we've got deployed. I think 30 something, 33, which we saw before. What I'm going to do is just walk you through very quickly how easy it is to create a new virtual machine. So in this case, I'm going to go new. I can just call this one test 001. Hopefully my network connection is still OK. Generation, virtual machine generation largely determines um, uh, the kind of BIOS settings for the virtual machine and some other uh, settings that are available at the hardware layer. Gen 2 is, is just the standard. Which node am I going to deploy onto? Where am I going to store this virtual machine? I'll just drop it in. I'll drop it in uh, this particular node. Oh, sorry, this particular storage account. And I could choose subsequently later to replicate that to as part of a stretch cluster if I wanted to. How many virtual processors? How much memory? Do I want to connect it to a particular network switch? Uh, and I can choose all my relevant settings, nothing complicated, and then I would click Create. And that could be done through the UI, through PowerShell, nothing too crazy, but just an easy to use experience uh, that locally I can use to manage my virtual machines. And the emphasis on locally there is this is a tool that I would typically install in the site or on, on premises somewhere and manage my clusters and virtual machines from. It's not something that I have to run outside of my data center. It's not something... I, can't, I don't have to manage this from the cloud if I prefer to manage with local tooling. So generally speaking, Azure Stack HCI and, and Windows Admin Center are easy to manage, efficient, can be managed programmatically through PowerShell. Um, but in this case, Windows Admin Center makes that very easy. And whether I'm managing some of the settings across my virtual machines, my volumes, my storage volumes, in this case, everything's fine. Uh, I've got all of those capabilities available to me. Oops. If I look at my volumes view, I can see I'm getting low on storage. Probably want to check that out. I know we've been deploying a number of workloads, get my latency views, my throughput. So it's useful for understanding what's happening with the environment. If 
I want to create some new uh, volumes to store my workloads. I can create those and uh, subsequently drop virtual machines and workloads on them. So as a whistle-stop tour, this is my one-stop shop for managing my Azure Stack HCI clusters. Now, one thing we'll explore in tomorrow's session is when we start to integrate with the Dell tooling that sits inside this context view. So I'll make sure we walk through that tomorrow. What that exposes to you is all of the Dell value add for managing the Azure Stack HCI infrastructure uh, around hardware and software updates, around security controls, and much more.